He did not hesitate to inflict pain. Now, all he feels is intense, unstoppable agony. Uh, okay. So this is the day one update, I guess, for the Consuming Dark Pathfinder. Now I'm playing that, like, I feel like I'm saying that I was, like, baiting on that. No, I wasn't gonna play. Anyways, this, I ended up actually playing this thing, me and having to do a dual start together, share a lot of our map was Atlas progression. And I kind of took over a lot of the bossing towards the late game, and I think it took us about 13 hours um, to get all four watchstones, like Uber Elder and Maven. And that was like pretty delayed actually, because I ended up like just like not wanting to push too hard. Because I wanted to just like kind of play the game and just relax a little bit, and especially do a lot of big boom expedition stuff like this. And so this build so far has been what I've been using to like push bosses, do a little bit of T17 content. Um, super freaking jank. And then mostly just farming a mix of crop rotation, um, expedition, and then like a lot of bosses, destructive play, that sort of thing. It's been alright so far. And I think like the biggest thing about this build is I just wouldn't necessarily recommend it over the other builds. I think a lot of people have had like a lot of success playing like Armageddon Brand Sabo, because I think that thing is super powerful in the early game. Uh, whereas this is a little bit more awkward as a corpse skill, so it doesn't quite have like the cast speed scaling of say like a necromancer um, And it doesn't have like the Early game power of an elementalist playing knight, but it does have some really really nice scaling And with two consuming darts you do have enough damage to play the whole game And you do have enough coverage so that you're clearing everything while you're mapping The problem though is that it's a little bit unresponsive because the base cast speed of cremation is like really really low, right? It's like 0.8 um, but the build itself is like pretty tanky right now. I do enough damage. Uh, and it like ramps okay. There's like a lot I still need to do on this build. I think there's a long way to go. Um, especially defensively. And I'll be prepping tomorrow and trying to gank this ready for like farming ubers, especially the ones that aren't Exarch and Eater, because those kind of get ZHP cheese, so more like farming things like Sirius and getting it Simulacrum ready. And then eventually pushing this sort of into what I think is going to be a really efficient Baldo farmer. Um, but that's pretty contingent upon certain items appearing on trade league. So I'll go over what's up like this right now. Um, and we can import the character into POV. But basically, it's pretty much exactly how I imagine the day two POV. It's somewhere between the day one and the day two POV. So I'm using still two consuming darks. They're both corrupted with damage over time. Uh, I have a 6 inch coil on that I just put on. I was playing with an armor chest prior to that. And then I have more elemental shift over here. And then also a watcher's eye for elemental shifts. So I think like... I don't know. Over uh, here. Nope. Here. And I think combined with the taste of hate, I'm somewhere around 80-ish percent uh, fisting in the deli. And that's enough to like at least tank Minotaur. If I get a little bit more just off of, like a second Watcher's Eye mod or putting in the Lethal Pride once, you know, Peel Star Farming more four ways and five ways, then I think it's going to be much more safer against Fizz Min Basically, Fizz Hits won't matter at all. Also have Anathema here. This was, you know, Self-Crafted Ring. And then extra cool fades on. For a long time, I was playing this with void manipulation support. It doesn't work um, unless you're playing with like original sin. But yeah, so that kind of sucks. And then I have this belt. I really want to stitch in here eventually, but I'm kind of waiting out on tides of time to see how that goes. Again, self crafted piece here. This was a fractured cold res, and then I hit it with essence of greed until it hit two good suffixes. Finished with a benchcraft there. Rog amulet. Um, helmet is just purchased straight off of trade. And I say the biggest thing that I was underrating for this build was this cluster setup. So this jewel is really, really easy to make first of all. Actually, every every jewel in here is really easy to make. Um, this one in particular, this this one, the damage over time, you can just buy it, it's like super cheap. But I think this alone almost doubles my damage, just this cluster setup. Three pop jewels are really cheap. This one was like kind of crazy, I bought this for like 2 chaos, something like that. But I would say this is the jewel that I had the most trouble with, and then someone from my chat was like, hey, I watched Ben. He said just reforge caster, so I did that, and then I hit it immediately. Um, but brute for potency spike concoction, this is really great because later on it sets you up for a perfect flash up time once you get tides or once you get a really really aggressive belt. Right now my belt is kind of just like mid. It's okay, it's not terrible, but it's kind of mid. Um, yeah, but this is really easy. This is just a reforge caster on the medium cluster. If you didn't know that, well, now you know. Still only takes steeps. I think this is about 20% more damage from my build and like really big because my temporal change isn't as strong as it usually is. I'm not quite used to that. Um, and that's just something to explore. And then now I'm running this flask it up. And you'll notice I'm not playing with a quicksilver flask. And frankly, it's because I don't think I need to. 
I think this movement wise is pretty much fast enough. I'm at 82, I'm at 100 actually. Um, with my onslaught up, with haste up, so that's like pretty solid. And I think generally the thing that kind of limits the clear speed of this is the speed of poison proliferation, and that's pretty much it. If you can get past that, not a big deal. I'm not sure there's other things I want to cover on this build right now. I will say that tomorrow I'm going to be swapping from Nature's Boon over to Master Surgeon and switching my life flask setup. The reason I run an instant life flask early on is because I don't really have the defenses to have slow recovery, right? I only have the defenses to survive single hits, and I don't have, like, you know, if, if like, I don't know, Minotaur and, like, Phoenix are hitting me inside formed invitation, then I'm taking down probably, like, four, five, six thousand health per second, so I'm trying to flask in between that to survive, so I run instants early, but as I do my transition, you know, get towards, like, 50k, 60k max hit, have some more layered defenses from Eternal Damnation, or, like, you know, Milton Faith, that sort of thing, it's gonna be much more in that range, um, where I want to have slower, but more consistent recovery that's persistent as well. Um, I would show you guys some T17 content, mm. but it's somewhere in the bot instead. I'm not going to run it right now. I'm like super, super tired. So, you know, hopefully I get this build up and feeling pretty invincible soon. I hope everyone's having a good league start. By the way, Peacock of Bouncing is super broken as well. That thing always hits bosses for single target. It's not like random bounce. It's just like it's homing basically. So give you the heads up as well. Anyways, bye.